Welcome back. It's been a little bit to the Snack Bite uh, segment. I'm your host, Ryan Hernia, a.k.a. Konoha Cafe, a.k.a. Uh, Ryan Hernia, a.k.a. Never Lose Heart, and my best buddy. What's up, guys? I'm Brady, Brady Cardia. You could call me a lot of things, just don't call me a doctor. I don't know how to stitch that up. Mm-mm. Welcome back to the Snack Bite segment. We talk about all the latest, greatest topic. And Ryan, what topic are we talking about today? Today, I'm glad you asked, Brady Cardia, uh, late for dinner, uh, early to lunch. We are talking a little bit about the new summer anime coming out summer this year. Summer anime. We watched a few. Very excited. We, there's only a few out so far, and yep. we watched some good ones. Very there's excited. There's some good ones. There's some bad ones. Actually, I don't think there's any bad ones. There are. I'll show you some. Oh, okay, okay. I'm excited. I'll, I'll, I'll suggest you some bad ones. and uh, Let's do it. But yeah, there's a bunch of cool things coming out. There's a bunch of things what already came out, what we've we like dipped our toes into. We, yeah, we, our little, our little pinky toes. We dipped a little pinky toe into. So let's let's get... Ooh, ooh, don't do that. Let's... <laughs> Let's get just, your heart again. Let's just get right into it. Let's talk about what we watched. I think they're done with mm-hmm. uh, with us blue balling them a little bit and kind of just like you know giving them a tip. They want the whole shebang, you know. Shebang. They, they want me. They want to throw a big dick on them right now. Oh uh, no, 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 no. All right. So the first one up <laughs> is probably going to be the anime that's going to be trailblazing mm-hmm, the entire mm-hmm, summer. Mm-hmm. It's going to be one, two, three. Jujutsu Kaisen <laughs> season two. two. Episode one. Yeah, that's what we watched. We practiced that multiple yeah. times, and we, I, I think we nailed it. Every night on FaceTime for three hours, we tried. Yeah, after, <laughs> after we were done making kissy noises to one another. <laughs> 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 Did you wipe around? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes, we watched episode <laughs> one of here. season two of JJK and God Gilly Bolly Jolly Folly. It was... Mm-hmm. What was it? Uh, it was excellent. It um, was it delicious. Ten out of ten. Um, we're both anime onlys. We are. So we are. Take note about that if you are a, man- a manga Here's the person. Thing. Here's the thing. Everybody, definitely on TikTok. If you guys don't follow us on TikTok yet, follow us at snackworm.yt at TikTok.com. Um, I don't know if that's that. But, <laughs> oh, my um, gosh. That's it's, on, in yeah, it's, it's in the description. It's in the description. description. Everybody's saying, you got to read the manga. You're going to be crazy. What's happening? <laughs> oh, you don't I read think- the manga. Your life must suck. Am I, I'm like... Am- that's a lucky guess. <laughs> I'm like, listen, bitch, my life does suck already. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you knew that, but that's a lucky guess. You okay? Whatever. But uh, I'll give you that one. <laughs> but here's the thing: we don't read the manga, but we watch the anime. And Jolly Bolly, I always said that. It, I thought it was pretty good. The <laughs> Jiggly <laughs> Billy, <laughs> Jiggy Billy. Um. Anyway, it was pretty good. I thought it was pretty good. Um. Mm. Obviously, there was some tension parts. Um. Did you notice in the first like? 15 to 10 minutes it was kind of scary a little bit yes. like scary airy something like like something was going to happen we wasn't sure what it was and nothing kind of did happen <laughs> did you get a jump scare so um gege uh akutama yes. gege, gege oko fudge i forgot i forgot the writer's name but gege is their, their first name um they kind of have outwardly spoken that very this is like a horror shown in and mm. there has been some horror elements in the first but season. has never been like fully like ooh spooky spooky i will say the new the new um episode definitely had like oh my a gosh. heavy uh, I, it, aspect it, of the horror. vibe felt i mean halfway point kind of got back to the old jjk way but the first half was like this is a different mm. vibe mm. like for the first 10 15 minutes until our boy gojo pops up um, you don't really know what's going on, and like this is kind of scary. And they did a good job. They did a good job with yes. the, with the creaking, with the slow door opens, with the mm-hmm. let's split up kind of vibe. You know, it's you know <laughs> some stuff is gonna go down when you split up. Yeah. And like there's a couple parts <laughs> I was like, if I was a little little baby, I would have got scared. I don't think I got too scared. Yeah. And now that we're older, we know that Fred. Velma, Velma and uh, Daphne, you guys are with me. We're going to check out the master bedroom. Mm-hmm. You two go check out the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, but um, I don't know if we want to go too much into spoilers, but um, I really love the vibe change of the first half of the first episode mm. because I was like, oh my gosh, this is like a horror shonen. This is like something like... Well, I mean, like I said, they, they have always kind of dabbled in horror a mm-hmm. little bit. There are some like really creepy moments for sure. Remember, think, think back to the first like... Two episodes of the JJK episode season one. Yes. They go to like a weird, scary, like mm-hmm. huge office building. But I always felt like it balanced the line of still being shown in comedic, uh, comedic, and then like still having like that horror elements. Mm-hmm. But this was full on, like it had the scary movie, right. or it right. had the scary music, it had the splitting up, it had like 
the eerie feeling of like something's gonna happen, but what's gonna happen? Um, um, let's focus on the deep on the animation for a second. It felt a little bit like rotoscoping, rotoscoping being the animation vibe mm-hmm. of like kind of like almost like animating over someone who's actually moving. It yes. felt a little bit like that, plus more um, traditional. Um, animation so it, it looked really really good very very fluid mm-hmm. what'd you think 100 percent. there were some parts i was like holy crap how many frames are in the second mm. because it was like they had like jumping parts they had moving parts everything was flowing really well together i'm <laughs> like damn these animators put their heart and their effort like right. making sure they value like like what scenes need to be fully animated to that degree well, of that's level. Well, that's why to all every frame. Exactly. But there was like, obviously not every scene needed that like crazy detail animation. Right. But the scenes, like what really add to it, I, I've noticed like the scenes what have the more tense moment is the scenes what got choppier and the scenes what kind of conclude the tense moment got a little bit more fluent. So, mm. so there's a scene where like one of the girls like got spooked and she like jumped up and like walked out the door. as like, that shows like her jitteriness of the nature of of like getting scared and stuff like that so i really liked it it was beautiful and like the opening man that's like oh man that it opening was is super cool it, it was super cool yeah. and like honestly like i don't see i barely saw any of the main characters this is know, like a gojo like oh, season yeah. well i think i think they'll probably change up oh 100 i think the opening like will change like halfway six. yeah do you know the this is like this flashback episode is only supposed to be like maybe two chapters and they're making it like six episodes and that's good i need more young gojo i want him like he's still at his prime but i want him like still developing his prime. he looks more like uh easy going too for yeah sure. I, I wonder there he's it, 28 in the in in the current there time. is there is like a lot more scenes in this where like he doesn't have his glasses on as much so i wonder if that develops a little bit more over time when they're in the gym and she's like trying on his glasses yeah and then the... she like when he was having beef with what's his face who's the bad guy now uh she puts on his glasses and she runs out and like oh that's cute but like yeah. she has she knows that like he needs those glasses for whatever reason i don't know if they ever say like why he needs to cover yeah. it up the second half definitely it went from like horror story to second half being uh, sliced like, a lot Life. Almost, almost like a school life but I do like it because you follow Gojo and like the main bad guy now I feel so bad I forget his name we should we should go back and like rewatch I mean I gotta go back and rewatch yeah. it for sure but like you get to like start seeing the tension of like what happened over time because that's why my big thing is like you know Gojo and this guy have beef but what's their beef and mm-hmm. even shows in their school life like they still don't have the same ideals of what it means to like be True. a like kind of like a jujitsu sorcerer True. kind of they, have, they want they want to bring up they want to bring peace in different ways. Yes. Um, so, uh, overall consensus for me, I love the first episode. Uh, it's been a long wait. Very excited. Um, I'm going to give it a 9.2 snacks out of 10. Oh. Uh, I'm definitely going to be watching more. Here's the thing. Um, I think it was great. I just need to see more. Um, it is a shonen. I feel like there wasn't that much action in this. It was very dialogue heavy. What's You need that. You For a good story, you need dialogue. But I feel like they just could have balanced a little bit more action into it. But it was still entertaining. I would say it's 7.5 for me. Could have been better, but definitely wasn't bad. Just a little, sure. little heavy on for the dialogue, sure. not going to lie. I fell asleep because the first viewing, I fell asleep because it was late. And I was like, I need to watch it. So it was like the night it came mm. out. And I fell asleep, and then I had to rewatch it the next day. Um, so you said, you said 7.5? 7.5, you heard I, me I, right. I, that's fine. That's fine. You know, honestly, it was a little a little talk heavy. But mm. uh, it, I, I, I was grading it off like mostly animation mm. like, and like quirkiness. Um, next up we want to talk about mm-hmm. is going to be. Should uh, we say at the same time? We got it. We got one, two, three. Zob 100 bucket list of, of the, the dead. dead. Yep. Ooh, we that's, rehearsed that. Give me five. That's the one <sighs> we we FaceTime in the morning for three hours mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. not at night. And obviously that wasn't as fluent as the first one because morning jitters. Yeah, morning jitters. We're still kind of, um, um, you know, wiping the crusties from our eyes and our assholes and kind of just like getting going. Just my eyes. Just I, his ass. I don't, okay. Anyway, uh, Zom 100, Bucket List of the Dead. I guess you could just call it Zom 100 or just Zom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I personally like this one a lot. So this is one that I was, I, I mean, I've been talking about for a while yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. You've I, been hyping it up, man. I, I've, I've been very excited for this one. I think you one. were counting down the days. Well, because it, get this. I saw the manga and mm-hmm. I was like, "Ooh, that looks really cool!" But it this, these motherfucking Barnes and Noble people—it was behind some plastic, uh-huh. I guess, because it's like rated R. Manga. Oh, I hate plastic in general, For but sure. definitely on manga. The, you heard it here first, guys. Brady hates silicone titties. Yeah. What? Yep, no plastic surgery here. All all real. Okay. He said that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess. 
They loves. love. They love their live action. Netflix hears ooh new anime, new live action, <laughs> like anything. They're 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 definitely the type of company is like let's just throw a bunch of things to the wall and see what sticks. They're like one of these live actions have to stick, and, and it's like seventeen live actions later. All right, this is gonna be the one. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, you were hyping this up. I gave it a try, and I was like, wow. G. Willikers, this is a good did one. I, did I text you about the, did I, t- I texted you about this one, right? Yes, and then, you did. And then you're, I'm going to go home and watch it. And yes, yes. I literally watched it. Was it last night? Yeah, because it just came it out. fucking yesterday. Yeah, at, <laughs> at, the, at the time of this recording, it just came out the night before we started recording this. And we watched it immediately. And I think it does everything right. I think for first episodes, as first episodes go with all anime, it set the tone. Like, it lets you know, it's like, this is the character, this is what they experience, and this is what their motives, and this is what's going to be going forward. But I also like it because you don't know what's going to kind of happen next. How this one kind of ends is like, you know, like, okay, they want to do this, this, and this, but they don't really set up like, oh, there's this big bad, or there's this like top thing on their list or something. They kind of just sets up like, this is the direction they're kind of going. What makes me interested is like, no, I have to watch episode two. Like, where does this go next? Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I agree. It, it, uh, it had high energy the whole mm-hmm. time. It was very unique. And it was like, what I keep saying is over and over again is that it doesn't, I like that as a fresh feel and not like your typical like 15 year old pro tag coon. Mm-hmm. This guy is like, like, I won't, I won't say mid 20, maybe early 20s, kind of go, kind of navigating the mm-hmm. office life. This is what you've been asking for. You've been asking for an out of high school, just everyday man. Right. This is your out of high school, everyday man who hates his nine to five job. I don't hate my nine to five job, but I do have an mm-hmm. office job, which I did kind of relate to a little bit mm-hmm. with this gentleman a little bit because I work long hours something like 12 plus hours a night sometimes and then i'll go home sleep for six hours and kind of get kind of get it going again yeah (laughs) immediately afterwards but yeah what i like about this is like if you guys don't know the base premise is this guy works a really shitty office job and he hates he works it for three years and then zombie apocalypse happens and it does this really cool thing where it shows his excitement about the zombie cop populace because he has all this free time now. Mm-hmm. Like he's not worried about the zombies at all. I don't think it shows one thing where he's like, "Oh shit, they're zombies." He's like, "I have so much free time," mm-hmm. and I think how they demonstrate that is so awesome because like you start the episode with these light, vibrant colors, and because he's he's young, he's joyful. He's like, "Just got out of my uni. I'm gonna go into this new job. I'm really excited for he's this new job." Bright eyed, bushy tail, yes. and, and then everyone there's like, "Yeah, you're like that for right now." Yeah, and then the job hits, and then the animation comes great. Gray, and the animation gets less vibrant. The animation gets less fluent. That's what I want to talk about a yes. little bit. I think, I think it's important to touch on that this stylistically was mm-hmm. gorgeous as well. Um, there wasn't a over massive, like overwhelming amount of blood either. Mm-hmm. It was the blood was um, different colors. Yeah, and, and then it kind of showed that he was seeing the world in colors for the first time in a long time. Yes, he was seeing the world. As how it should, maybe it should be or why mm-hmm. he wants to see it. Yeah, yeah. Because right when right when the zombies started hitting, he it clicked in his head. It's like I don't have to go to work tomorrow. And we all been there. I think you texted me something. We all been there where like we are dreading the next day of work, and you're like, I wish something would happen. I wish a nuke or something <laughs> would just like. No, no, any- at, one, at one point in his office, setting, he's like, maybe a missile will hit us today. And I kind of thought that too. I'm like, I'm always thinking like. Maybe we'll be robbed today, or maybe there's a fire today. And I'm yeah. like, <laughs> but as soon as that happens for him, the zombie apocalypse happens for him. His his vision starts to get colored, and like he's excited, and you get to see his movement, and he gets to he has this thing where he got to see the blue sky for the very first time. Yeah, and it was a euphoric moment. It was really cool to see this dude who kind of became a dead person, like almost like a zombie in its own right, mm-hmm. to come back to life a little bit and start running fast and being excited again. And mm-hmm. this dude was like jumping off of buildings and stuff like that. Yeah, low key there's some because it does hint like he was athletic. He played rugby throughout all of college but it was weird because it was three years later and he was still as fit like he's not like the shredded dude i think the answer to that is anime anime (laughs) but yeah it was cool because like i guess they just needed something to like oh he could do all these amazing feats because he has a background in something so they just needed a why he could like jump off the buildings and stuff like that don't read too much into it it's a goofy zombie i don't think this series is going to be anything too serious exactly it's going to be something lighthearted. it it doesn't it I think when the part the parts that were supposed to be scary, they nailed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but 
overall, it's it definitely has like a fun vibe to it. Definitely, yeah. it's gonna have like a silly vibe. Yeah, and now the episode kind of concludes is like he makes it's called Zom One Hundred Bucket List of the Dead. He in the in the whole episode, he's talking about all the things he wanted to do, but he has this job now that he has all this free time. All he has to deal with is is the inconvenience of zombies. He's making a bucket list of everything he wants to do. Well, right. I'm excited to see like how is this anime gonna develop, like. He, all he's doing is this this bucket list of things he want to do. He just has to avoid the zombies. I'm certain it'll. I'm sure. I'm certain there's there's a lot to do with it. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure it's gonna be good. Plus, all the manga covers, all the manga covers are like the craziest, coolest mm-hmm. manga covers. Yeah. I, I really, I'll show you later. Yeah, I really love how. Um, just to wrap up. The final thing is just the color. Like we said before, is like they flipped the gray and dim colors. The style on its, is always amazing. On its head, right when the zombies start attacking. Because in his eyes, he's like, a world of color has just opened up. And I think it's very stylistic. And definitely give it a shot. You guys are going to love this. Definitely if you want something like not too crazy, not too like, I'm sure it's going to be a little story driven. But if, if I don't think it's going to be like something where you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I have to connect this piece, this piece, and this piece. It's probably going to be something where you could just watch and enjoy i mean i think it's gonna be amazing just because netflix like saw this read the script and like read the manga or whatever and they're like dead ass like we want this yeah. and so like it has to be somewhat some levels of some levels of success to w- warrant them that much interest in it so um yeah that's number our number two mm-hmm. and moving on to our number three summer pick anime part one i think we're gonna cheat a little bit Right. We're so, going to cheat, so don't get mad. Right. So please don't cancel us. Please don't call your mom uh, unless you want to send her this video so she can watch it as well. Um, please don't, like, turn it off. But we want to talk a little bit about uh, my adventures with Superman. On Max, the new HBO streaming it's service. It's also on Adult Swim. It's, oh, and it's, Adult it's, Swim. It's, it's going to be on Adult Swim every Saturday night. So if you guys don't know, on Adult Swim and Max, they released this new Superman animation very heavily influenced by anime. It's called My Adventures with Superman, and you basically follow Superman in his very, very, very early years of finding his powers, starting to be a superhero and stuff like that. And his time at the Daily Bugle. Yes. So you get Wait, to is like... Wait, that what it's called? Uh, Daily oh, Planet. Daily Pla- Daily Bugle Spider-Man. Yes. And then Daily Planet. Mm-hmm. And, and they need different names for these publishing companies. And then Captain Planet's the guy with, and the, then Captain Planet. with the rings and the And then Earth his powers. girlfriend is Earth. Remember, we, remember that was a bit... Anyway, uh, yeah, so this follows the early years of Superman and Clark Kent, and it's just a really cool, wholesome Superman story, and it does a lot of things right. I mean, we only watched the first one or two episodes, but mm. I think it's going in a good direction. I totally agree. So, like Brady said, um, this is a anime S. Think of, like, The Legend of uh, Korra, or, like, Avatar Last Airbender, or, like, Teen Titans. Heavily inspired. Or, like, Rex. What's that? Mechanical Rex? Generator Rex. Generation Rex. <laughs> Or, or like um, Ben Ten Shippuden, mm-hmm. or it's kind of like an anime s like, mm-hmm. or even Invincible. Yes. Invincible is also like a kind of an anime vibe. Honestly, guys, I thought this was animated by the Invincible people. It's not. It's fully animated by Warner Bros. Studios. I thought it was uh, animated by Studio Mir. Mir did also Korra and Boondocks, and then that's kind of like an anime vibe. Yeah, kind but of this was Warner Brother. It was Warner Brothers. What's like really cool, and they get to flex like their animation style when it comes to this. And finally, right. Because, yeah. like, uh, the only thing they have in animation realm is, like, they'll have, like, some silly shows on Max, like the Harley Quinn, what's more cartoony. And then they'll have some serious, like, Batman animated uh, movies coming out. But besides that, that's all they have. So this Superman thing is something they could really flex. They're, like, they probably saw, like, how good Invincible did. And they're, like, let's make something like it. Maybe not as dark. more. Maybe follow more of the Boy Scout Superman rather than, like, a dark Superman. So... I love the character archetype, Mm -hmm. um, himbos. Okay. I love those. I thrive to be a himbo. Mm. So, yeah. So, basically, a himbo is someone who is really strong, really dumb, and really nice. Okay. I would, if I always remember it as, like, a person who was just, like, a thick-bodied, abled man who was always super kind, I would love that. Yeah. I would love to be that. And and that's what Superman is in this one. I think he's a little himbo. I don't think he's 100%, because he's not dumb. He's kind of dumb. He's a kid, not a kid. He's a young adult making young adult decisions. He's kind of dumb. 
He has most of the archetypes to be a himbo. He has like the body of like an upside down triangle Dorito. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. And then obviously you have like the two smaller characters, and that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. They're normal size essentially. Yeah. <laughs> um. Someone in the comments for the video for the episode was saying they're like, yeah, someone on the animation team really wanted Berserk and his wife to be, have a have in, be an alternate world, have a happy life. Yeah. And that's what this is yeah. <laughs> because you know have you seen his, his girlfriend in, mm-hmm. in Berserk and same thing with Lois. Yeah, I really like Lois's design in this. It's very different. It's not it's not your like common Lois design. I think they did race swap her just a little bit. Um, but like she does great. She's amazing. She's like a little quirky, but she's also not one of those like archetypes. Just like ah, I'm I'm getting walked over and stuff. Like she holds her own for a little bit. She knows yeah. she knows how to run away from a big giant robot and stuff like that. Yeah. And she yeah. also, I noticed, she doesn't stop for shit. Um, in, in the Superman, uh, my adventure with Superman, um, they're getting chased by this giant robot, and Clark, uh, before your Superman, gets hit, and she just full throttles, keep on running. She looks back for a minute, she's like, oh no, Clark, and then she just books it, and it's just like, oh yeah, she just really full throttle, just foot on the gas. She's all gas. All gas, no brakes. Mm. Um, no, don't need no man, but they are really cute together. So maybe they do need each other. <laughs> mm. Um, anyway, I'm excited to draw. I'm excited to draw these characters. It's it's a really cool take. I'm very excited. I want to watch more. I don't have Max. Maybe I'll bum it bum it off of Brady. I'm not sure yet. No, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no don't my. do it. Don't do it. <laughs> All my passwords are taking up. But. All my passwords are really embarrassing things. <laughs> like I do, love Ryan forever. Do you want to know my Wi-Fi password now? Yeah. So my new Wi-Fi is called Who's Hungry. And then uh-huh. my password is uh, me, bitch. <laughs> I'm serious. That's actually really <laughs> Thank funny. Thank you. I can't wait to go over. <laughs> it's uh, been me, bitch. Oh, no. It's me, bitch, LOL. Oh, me, bitch, LOL. Okay. So that's some things we've been watching. Is there anything? There is. Yes. Is there something in the future you're kind of excited about? Yes. I'm very excited. Well, tell me. Ooh. How much time do we have left? Oh, we have enough for four minutes. So we're at 15 minutes right now? Oh, yeah. We're at 21. I want to talk about two things. Okay. And, two. and then you say something after me. Go, go, go. I watched the first episode of Jobless Reincarnation, or also known as Mushenko Tenzai, I want uh-huh. to say. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So, it's called episode zero. So, I was like, okay, so here comes the recap episode. Yes. It was not a recap episode. Okay. It was super duper good. So, if you are a Jobless Reincarnation fan. Do that if you're a Jobless. If you're a Jobless Reincarnation fan. Musho- Mushoko Tenzai. One of the best Isekai animes ever put out. Ever. My, I'm dead ass. Mm-hmm. One of the best ones. His ass is dead. Shut up, Brady. <laughs> Be serious. <laughs> I'm trying to convince you to watch it too. Okay. The first episode of season two just dropped, and I am so hyped for it. The first episode, I was like, all right, fine, whatever. It's going to be kind of like a throwaway episode. It was not at all. Mm-hmm. It, sh- it really follows the tale of what happens to some of the villagers and the people from the great like mana disaster. Yes. <laughs> I'm not yawning because I'm bored. <laughs> um, and it got me really excited. And I really wanted more, like, immediately. So I'm very excited for the new job of Reincarnation. The new, another episode just dropped, like, a couple days ago. I like that they keep aging up the characters, like, hella fast. Yeah, because b- before I remember watching it, I was like, this kid's young. I don't want to follow this toddler around. But I'm really glad that they're aging him up to be, so like, fast. a like, young adult. Yeah, In season to episode one he is now like 15 yeah that's crazy and every few episodes there was like time skip it was like six months have passed in this village yeah i wonder <laughs> if they'll I, you'll go through his like whole life i'm an anime only so it definitely could it could it could um, like you age him up all the way until like 84 and he dives in like a tragic battle and then he, he, he eats the guys again <laughs> oh back into his other world what that sucks suck. yeah back like he did all this stuff and then he's back in there like, is it there is an east guy like that where it's called it's called like my uncle from another world and yeah. it's like uncle who went to another world for like 50 years and came back oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> that would suck you get like really good at this like other life and then you get east guy back like you woke up from a dream and you can't ever you can't do your powers anymore no uh so that's one i'm really really loving and really enjoying um, and I'm blessed too. I'm one of those people. I'm one of those people who like binged it like two months ago. Yeah. And the, stop yawning and saying at the same time. I'm so sorry. That's <laughs> the second, second or third time you're like. <laughs> I'm trying to engage. Engage after you yawn. <laughs> you're like, oh shit, I better say something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> I'm one of those people who. I binged it, and then like a month or a month and a half later, uh, that new episode came out after people who have waited for three years. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm one of those blessed people who didn't have to wait for three years. Yeah. Um, 
Another one. Okay. Is the Suicide Squad Isekai. Okay, yeah, that, that, that one does look pretty good. Did you watch What's, the trailer? Yes, I watched the trailer. I think uh, Harley Quinn looks awesome in that. I don't know if I love Joker's design in I it. Know. It's a little weird with the mouth, like the his, That's his the mouth only paint. That's off putting. Yeah, because like, yeah, it's definitely weird. I think it looks really cool. I, I, it's definitely unique because it's an anime, but like, it's a DC like it's so branded. Unique. Yes, it's so unique. It's like has DC icons and stuff like that, but it's like a fully animated one. Well, I think it's gonna be good. I love like Suicide Squad like idea. I love the comic books. I love one of the movies, not all the movies. I love one of the suicide movies. So I'm really excited just to see like how it goes and like what direction it takes. And I think that's something I'm really excited about. I'm not sure when it comes out. Me neither. But I love this uh, first poster. Oh my gosh. It looks so sick. It's not. Oh my gosh. It looks so clean. Yeah. Ryan put up that first poster. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, you could just do that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm actually, I'm actually gonna put. It, it looks good. She looks dope. No, 100. percent Um, imagine um, if they get Tara Strong to do the dub English voice actor mm, for which character? For Harley Quinn. For Har- oh, because yeah, she for, voices Harley Quinn. She does like a lot of characters. Yeah, but she does a really good Harley Quinn. Mm-hmm. So that would be cool if like they could get like the American voice actor for those characters to do those anime characters. And what's his name? Um, from Mor- from Morbius, the Morb Squad. Uh, Matt. Uh, oh shit. Um. D- 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 Keanu Reeves. Fucking, you know what I'm talking about. I, I want, I want the Suicide Squad oh, Joker to, no, to, that guy to sucks. voice the yeah, John, uh, Jared Leto. I want Gerard Leto to voice no, uh, Joker. No, it'd be funny. He's terrible. He's terrible. Yeah, it would be, be funny. Mean. I will say though, I agree with you. Mm-hmm. His mouth makeup for Joker, he mm-hmm. does look a little interesting. Yeah. I, I'm I definitely to watch, interested. I have to see more. That's the thing is like it caught our interest. Right, but there's more people in the Suicide, suicide Squad. There's like the Shark Guy. There's, yeah, there's shark Deadshot. King, there's uh, Clay, Clayface, Boomerang, Bo- Captain Boomerang, Captain Boomerang. Um, we have uh, other guy, Pete Davidson's character who betrays him in the first like two minutes. Yeah, then he dies. And then he dies. Yeah. Uh, oh, the Weasel Guy, the, the Weasel Dot Guy. DC's Rocky Raccoon. DC's um, the Spot. Mm-hmm. The Spot. Uh, 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 Calendar Man. Calendar Man. Yeah. What was e- Ebra's El- Elder's um, character? Shoot guy. He shoot guys. He, he shoot guys. He shoot guys really good. I don't want to say Taskmaster, but he's like a Taskmaster kind of yeah, person. Yeah, he's like a Taskmaster. Oh, like oh, could... oh. Uh, John Cena's character um, was... Undershaker? Un- was that his name? No, <laughs> that was not his name. <laughs> John, uh... Peacemaker. Peacemaker. Yeah. Undertaker. <laughs> I was close. I was close. <laughs> you ready to bring the pain, brother? <laughs> you know what? That's an exciting one. I'm really excited for finally another season of Double as a Part-Timer. Ooh, yes. Right? Yes. It's been a while. It's been mm. years. I would have to. Did you like the first season? Yes. I like. I love. I don't love the first season, but I liked it a lot because it was an interesting premise. Yeah. Because you get to see like this high, powerful devil and his like uh, companion. Like, high powered food. Yeah, and then they're like, okay, we're going to go to the real world because it's light work. And then you, they realize, we're broke. We're eating ramen. We need to get food. Like We have no power. Yeah, right they realize, like, this is a lot harder than expected. So I'm. It, it's just cool to see all the, like, shenanigans they get in. It's nothing, like, too crazy, but it's cool seeing, like, these high power. It's like a funny what if story. It, it is a funny what if because you get to see all these high power, like, characters, like, lose all their powers and, like, kind of suck at the human world. So I'm no, excited for that. I, I watched the first season. I, and I thought it was chill. I mm-hmm. thought it was chill, but it, I, I I can see it like expanding. You know, yes, yes. I want to see him try to like provide for his family and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Definitely with like all the upgrades and animation and story writing and stuff like that. True, true, true. I think it's gonna be good. So yeah, we reviewed JJK. We mm-hmm. reviewed uh, Zom 100. We reviewed uh, Superman, and then we also talked a little bit about. Um, uh, Jawless Reincarnation. We also talked a little bit about uh, Suicide Squad. I don't even know what it's called. It, uh, suicide Harley. Oh, su- Isekai Suicide. Isekai Suicide? Yes. That should be like a series on its, in its own. Where you Isekai to a world where everybody just commits suicide. And then goes to another world after that. And they just they jump Isekai yeah. world to Isekai world. Worldception. <gasps> and then we also talked about... Uh, Devil is a part timer. Devil is a full timer. That'd be that'd be kind of cool if it full timer or it, what if the it was, final season full timer. What if it was like Devil is a part timer and then the season was called like overtime. The Devil's a part timer. Devil's a full timer. Devil's a lead at the McDonald's. Devil's a uh, manager well, at the McDonald's. Or like it's called like overtime pay. Overtime or pay. Or like uh, I don't know like Devil over its time. 
Anyway. This feels like a good spot to end. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs>